You are listening to The Power Project. I'm your host, Brandi Voth. It's my goal each week to inspire and empower you to go out and live purpose-filled lives and own your God-given power. Now, some weeks that looks like me spotlighting women that are doing just that and sharing their stories with you. Other weeks, it looks like my take on things. And currently, it looks like a book study that we are doing over on our Facebook page, The Power Project. Now, whether you agree with Rachel Hollis's newest book, Girl Stop Apologizing or Not, one thing that cannot be debated is the fact that it is a high achievers tool to operating a hustle, a business, or whatever you want to call it. So let's go ahead and dig right in today and see what nuggets of wisdom are there waiting for us. I am Brandy Voth. I'm the founder of The Power Project, and we are doing our Girl Stop Apologizing book study that we have been working our way through. I'm super excited today because we have chapters seven, eight, and nine of the book. So I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you're enjoying this book. For those of you who have not been with us before on a study, this is not a regurgitation of the book. If you want that, then you're going to need to go buy the book and download the Audible and listen to it and or read it. This is my take on the subjects, the chapters, and my spin on those for you coming from my place of the gospel according to Brady. So this week in chapters seven, eight, and nine, chapter seven is it's been done before. And you guys, I'm so excited about this chapter. I, I just can't wait. Like I'm bursting at the seams to share this one with you. When I read it, I was like, oh my gosh, I know exactly what I'm going to say on the podcast, in the book study, on the live. This is awesome. So I started writing a book back in May of 2017 and no, it's not finished yet. Um, yeah, that's right. It's, we're going to be at the two year mark this May (laughs) next month. So I have not given it the precedence that it needs to be completed. I'm like 80% completed. Those of you that have written books, like I give you all the mad props because I'm like a batch creative, like When I feel inspiration, I write for like days and days and days and days and days, but the whole like daily grind of writing, I have a hard time staying consistent with. There's just so many things going on, but I have a chapter or a section of this book. I want to read you an excerpt out of that totally speaks to the chapter seven. It's been done before. So I did this. This is a March 29th, 2018. I'm just going to read you guys like the excerpt straight from what I have written. And I hope that it resonates with you guys because it speaks so much to me. I think as high achievers, a lot of times it's even though we don't want to be in the comparison trap, it is, we fall into it. So March 29th, 2018, finish listening to Girl, Wash Your Face. I couldn't put this book down. I listen with bated breath on the edge of my seat for the duration of the seven hours and four minutes of everything I've ever wanted to say in a book. She was me. My voice was hers. We were destined to become best friends. I was raised Pentecostal. She was raised Pentecostal. I was a good girl in high school. She was a good girl in high school. I'm short. She's short. I like to write. She likes to write. I tell people to wash their faces and get paid for it. She tells people to wash their faces and gets paid for it. I am brutally truthful. She is brutally truthful. I want to encourage people to be the best version of themselves. She wants people to be the best version of themselves. See where this is going? Yep. Straight into full-blown stalker tendencies. I immediately subscribed to her podcast. And over the course of a few days, I listened to every single episode. I legitimately stalked her on every form of social media. I watched every piece of media she had ever shot until my head was so dang full of inspiration and empowerment, it could explode and tiny little mustard sweater clad Rachels would come springing forth from the innards. Take a moment to let that visual soak in. Finally, there was someone like me in this space. There was an outspoken Christian woman 
not afraid to hustle, work hard, chase dreams, and tell others to quit making excuses. I took out a pen and I made a diary post, a dear diary post, because that's what I do when I'm like speaking my words into wisdom. So that's the first excerpt that I wanted to read you guys about this. It's been done before. And then here is where I follow up with it. And then one day it happened. The honeymoon was over. The letdown that can only be compared to that of January 2nd, when the holidays are over and you're back to that mundane routine with a slightly fluffier midsection and summer being the only thing to look forward to for months. Reality set in. And by reality, I mean that lying bastard Satan and his tricky web of lies called the comparison trap. I had sat down at the computer. It was time to finally finish writing that book. It was time to relaunch the blog. It was time to launch that podcast. I had started the book approximately 13 months before, and the blog and podcast had been in the work for about six months. I stared at my computer. I looked at the words on the page written before me, months before. These are good, I thought. The message is solid. It definitely comes from a place of purpose. It takes ownership, shares wisdom, and empowers and reaches people. It actually kind of sounds like Rachel Hollis. That's crazy. Oh, that Rach. Little does she know we're going to be best friends one day. It's so refreshing to see someone with your same views in this space. Daydream for a minute. Oh, no. No. No, no, no. My eyes widen and my breath suddenly caught in my throat. The screeching sound of tires sliding to a stop rang through my mind. And I could envision myself locking down the tires to avoid slamming into the back of the semi in front of me. I might as well have been the actor in that auto injury commercial where they call the tough smart lawyer. Remember, you you know that sound, that screeching sound? That was the sound of my dreams coming to a screeching halt. Wait, someone else has already done this. Someone else has already written the book I've dreamt of writing my entire life. Someone else has already created a movement for women everywhere to be inspired to live bigger lives, dream more, make an impact. Someone else has already, in the most brutally honest and lovingly compassionate way possible, told women to quit making their freaking excuses and live their best lives. Someone else has not only stepped into this space, but she is this entire space. There's not a woman that I don't know that doesn't either know about this book, has read this book, rock a made for more hat, watch her Facebook lives, check out her Insta stories. I mean, she has a documentary for goodness sakes. She's already done it. Bigger, better, and most importantly, before me. Well, that's great. This is just about as good as that time I started doing yoga on the kids' swim mat in the lake as a means of multitasking while the kids played, only to find out down the road that Voga has since turned into the newest and greatest thing since sliced bread. I totally invented that. And I totally had these words and this vision before I ever knew who she was and before she ever told me to wash my face. Oh, yeah. I was also washing my face and telling others to do it, but she beat me. She showed up while I had sat back thinking about finishing my book and launching my podcast. She had written my book. Now what? I kept watching. I kept listening and I kept sharing. It's not important who wrote the book anyway. I thought it's just important that the message is out there and I will fully and completely support it in any way possible. But dang it, just think if I would have gotten my book out first. So those are my words, you guys. Like those are what I wrote. That's literally my journey of what it looked like. I literally went from like this high of, wow, someone else has the same, the same voice that I have, the same um, space that I have to that Satan crept in and got me in that comparison trap where I thought I couldn't do it because I couldn't do it as grand as her, as she had done it. And we hear all the time, like, Comparison is the thief of all joy and don't compare your beginning to her end. But you guys, I just want you to know it happens like it truly happens. But the beauty of it is that just because someone else 
has gone before you, just because someone else has done something before you, it doesn't mean that you can't stand in your space or stand in that place with them and own your story. Okay. It just means that if they're doing it, then that probably means that there is a, if they're doing it on a large platform, that probably means that there is a necessity for that voice in the world, whatever it is, whatever you're looking at right now, whatever you're thinking about, whether it's starting a business, starting a nonprofit, writing a book, starting a podcast, um, creating a monthly ladies night out. It's okay. There's plenty of room at the table for everyone. And your story is your own unique story. Even if it parallels with someone else's so much so that it is uncanny, that is still your unique story, your own voice, and you you can show up and own your story and own your voice. You can still bring what you have to the table because at the end of the day, God put that voice in you. God gave you that story to be shared with the world. So don't let the excuse that it's been done before hold you back from fulfilling your purpose and walking in his will. Just like, I'm going to write my dang book. It's going to go out there. Just think if I would have let this podcast be shut down because I didn't think I could stand in the like arena of greatness as the Rachel Hollis's of the world. Just think if I would have let that hold me back. I wouldn't have met all the people that I've met that I've interviewed on the podcast in the last six months. I wouldn't have been able to bring these stories to you guys. I wouldn't have this amazing network of of influencers with purpose that are uniting together to make an impact in the world, to do big things. I would have like, I would have still been sitting at home dreaming about what if I could say yes, what if I would have done it? Seriously, you guys, don't let anybody else's success or victory hold you back from your own. So then chapter eight is what will they think? And this one's a fun one, you guys, because I I live in a small town, right? So you see like everyone in the town on a regular basis. And it's one thing for me to go live on Instagram or live on Facebook or do a podcast because I know that there are people in the world that God wants me sharing my story with. I know there are people in the world that God wants me speaking into. I know that there are people in the world that God wants me empowering. I know that I get that. But when you take that and you go live like a normal mundane life in small town USA, and you run into people in the grocery store, it's a little bit intimidating because you're like, Oh, so I put some stuff out on a public platform, what do they think? Because everyone has an opinion, right? All of the people in your warm market, all the people that have known you all your life, they all have an opinion. They all, they all have an opinion, right? So I was just talking about this yesterday with um, one of my friends that was on the podcast. And she said, you know, we're, we women are really good at being, when we know each other thinking, well, she doesn't have anything she can tell me. So that's great. So maybe you're not the person that my message is supposed to receive or be received by. However, maybe someone across the world like that message was intended for. So this is something I deal with. And I'm telling you guys, when I bring this to you and I say, you have to get over what others think of you. I'm preaching to myself here because it's honest to goodness, the truth. So I want you to think about something today. And I had to take this to like, I I had to take this to heart. I had to learn this myself. So what if we changed our thinking? And what if every time we thought like, what will they think of me? What if we thought, what will God think if I don't say yes? Have you um, ever thought about the fact that you might be worried about someone else's opinion more than you are worried about God's? Because you guys, he's the supreme creator of the universe. Your worth lies there. Your value lies there. He is the only one whose opinion matters of you. So have you actually been so concerned that you would rather let seventh grade Sally's opinion of you keep you from following God's call on your life and God's will and God's purpose? Seriously. And this is something that I had to tell myself, you guys, I had to get over it and be like, I'm answering God's call. It's, I don't care what other people think. So who are you actually listening to? Who are you actually in relationship with? 
are you so worried about not getting an invite to the block party that you're going to allow that standing in your way of being obedient and following God's call on your life? I can promise you that when you get like laser focused on walking in will and walking in purpose, that you just care less and less what others think. And when you realize that you are showing up and you are serving in the capacity that you are meant to serve in, that is when you realize that it doesn't matter what others think. They can think those things. They can have those opinions and you can put that on them and not on you because it's not on you at the end of the day. All you can do is show up and be the best version of you. Make sure you're being obedient. Make sure you're following God's call and the rest is on them. You have got to move out of what will they think? Because otherwise you're going to stand paralyzed in the fear of what others think. And you're not going to follow your call in life or your, or the, or God's will for your life, right? If you have a business that you need to start, that's going to financial financially contribute to your family. That's going to allow you to make an impact. That's going to allow you to give back, to do more. And you're going to stay paralyzed in your fear that seventh grade Sally is going to think you've lost your dang mind. Mercy sakes. Why are you letting your value and your worth be tied up in her opinion? Get over it. Move on. Seriously. And I want you guys to think about building a community of people that support you. Okay. Build, find like-minded people. If those people around you are not like-minded people, find the like-minded people, find the people that are out there wanting to make an impact. The ones that are saying, let's change the conversation, right? Let's create a movement. Let's do big things. Let's make an impact together. Let's build businesses. Let's start nonprofits, build that community. You guys, cause they're everywhere. I promise you, they may be on the other side of the world, but they're everywhere. And that is the beauty of social media. You can find those people that want to do big things on a big scale and you can link arms with them and you can build some beautiful relationships with them. It doesn't have to just be the people that you see in the grocery store, right? And guess what? When you start building that community, you're going to realize that the small stuff doesn't matter. The what's that? Those that matter don't care. And those that care don't matter. Dr. Seuss, take that to heart. So I want you to think about whatever opportunity that you are thinking about right now, whatever opportunity you're tossing around, um, whatever call you have on your heart, whether it's a, a business, a ministry, a nonprofit, a podcast, a platform, a blog, whatever you're looking at doing right now, I want you to think about rather than think about what people will think of you, I want you to think, how can this opportunity make an impact? All right. So how can it impact you? How can you impact the world with it? Are you thinking right now that you've heard enough, you have what it takes, and you're ready to start a side hustle? Well, girl, I think now is as good of time as ever that you jump over to the-powerproject.com backslash powerful business. Read my story there about how I got started in this business, and then fill out that email form and I would be happy to schedule a call with you and discuss more in depth what it is that I do. That's the-powerproject.com slash powerful business. So do you want to create a ripple in the world or do you want to create massive waves? And my, like, this is the visual that's in my mind right now is this like wave that's just rolling and it's gaining momentum and momentum and momentum. And so I had this little uh, analogy that came to mind a, a minute ago when I was getting my notes together for this. So think about this, like ripples don't make an impact, right? Do you guys understand like how beaches are made? So Hawaii is one of my favorite places on the planet. I love it. I love the beaches. I love the air, the climate, the people, the fruit. Um, ugh, makes my heart happy. It makes my, it is well within my soul on the islands. So Maui has been one of my favorite ones for a long time. Like I went to Maui, I went to Maui over and over and over before I would even branch out to the other islands. And so Maui has these beautiful, like sloping beaches that are really nice and sandy and fine and not coarse and, and kind of, you know, you can go to the, the lava rock ones, the volcano ash ones that are like coarse, but then there's like some really nice, softer, sandy beaches. Um, and you can kind of like find them anywhere on the island. You can pull over a, just about anywhere and find a really great, nice sloping beach. However, Hawaii, like the big island is the youngest island out of the chain. So they have 
it's it's recently become my favorite island since I've had a family because there's just a vastness and there's like all types of exploration you can do and there's such a wide terrain that you can explore. So that's become the island that we really like to take the kids to. However, the beaches aren't as abundant as they are in Maui. And when you find the beaches, they're more like there's a lot of rocks to get to them and and they're not just wide open and sprawling. Don't get me wrong. There are some great beaches on the island. But the first time I went, I was really intrigued by the fact that there just wasn't a wide amount, like an abundant amount of large, nice sloping beaches. So that's because it's the youngest island. So the beaches are created because waves like crash against the rock of the the volcano that, you know, has formed these islands. It crash against the shore and the rock and the waves erode away and they drag the sand out, right? And that's what creates a beach. Now, I want you to think about this. If you're creating a ripple or if you're, if you're afraid to rock the waters, you're afraid to stir the waters and you don't want to turn them up, you want to just keep them smooth sailing because you're afraid of what people will think, are you going to make an impact with that? No. The waves are going to crash against the shore. They're going to leave behind an impact. Still waters do not create impact. Ripples don't create impact. But the waves create these beautiful beaches and make an impact. That's their purpose. They get their momentum and they keep going and they leave behind an impact. So just because you're facing opposition, just because you're crashing against the shore, just because you're crashing against rock, That doesn't mean that you quit and you let those opinions slow down your momentum because you have an impact to make in the end. So you just keep coming in. You just keep coming back. You just keep creating the waves because you're walking in purpose and you're following your will in life. So that is um, that chapter eight, what will they think? And then chapter nine is good girls don't hustle, which I really love, like it makes me really excited about. So you guys know my background, you know, that there were a lot of people in my life that, that said, grow up, get married, have babies, have a nice man with a good job and money to take care of you. So (laughs) I want you guys to know one thing right now. It doesn't matter if you hustle or you don't hustle. There will always be an opinion of someone that tells you you're not doing it right. And they'll tell you you're doing it wrong. So when I was going to college and I was doing international studies degree, I had all these people going, what are you doing? What are you going to do with that? Like, I don't even understand how you make money with that degree. I don't understand how you, how are you going to do that in your town? Right. How's that going to turn into a business? They were so confused. Why don't you want to get married and have babies right away? They were so confused with that. Fast forward where I ended up a stay at home mom for 10 years And there were people that wanted to know why I wasn't working outside of the home. And they thought that I sat at home and ate bonbons all day and, you know, was a trophy wife and let someone take care of me. Little did they know, I always wanted to follow my purpose and my dreams in life. So I just want you to know, to begin with, they can tell you to hustle. They can tell you not to hustle. That is once again, another opinion of someone else's. So when I was a little girl, and I'm going to assume that if you are watching this video, you're in my group, you're on my page, I'm going to assume that you have a hustle in your heart. I'm going to assume that whether you're hustling for Jesus, you're hustling in a nonprofit, you're hustling in business, I'm going to assume that you have hustle, right? You have shown up and you show up for yourself and you go hard. And I realize that not everyone does and that's okay but this is how I'm cut. This is the mold I'm cut from. And this is the mold that my squad is cut from. So when I was a little girl, I had a lemonade stand. Like I loved making money. I loved business. I was legit five or six years old. The first time that I probably five when I put a lemonade stand out and I didn't care that not very many people stopped. I didn't care that I didn't even stop to think about whether or not the people were thirsty that I was serving lemonade to. I loved the business aspect of it. I loved offering a product. I did care that I wanted to make sure my lemonade tasted good. I hoped it did. But I I wanted to, I, I loved the business aspect of it. I loved selling to my market. I loved serving my market. I loved them give, getting lemonade from me and saying, oh, that's great lemonade. I liked that interaction. I liked that 
I like the sales of it. I'll be honest, you guys. I don't mind sales. I enjoy having a product that I can offer to someone else and solve a problem, right? So it was summertime. It just so happened that they were thirsty and I was solving a problem. So I didn't consider at that time that I was a good girl and I shouldn't have a lemonade stand. I thought, this is cool. And I want to get those purple sparkly jellies that they have down at Kmart on the blue light special. So I'm going to make some money at a lemonade stand and go buy me some jellies, right? When I put together my first uh, community awareness event, I was somewhere around that age as well, six or seven. And we, I was a generation, I was the first generation of the Say No to Drugs campaign. So we had learned at school all about drugs and how bad they were and how we needed to say no to them. And I was super passionate about this. Like I wanted to share this message with the entire world. I wanted everyone to know that drugs were bad. So I literally like went and and had my mom pick out some fabric that was just saying no fabric at Walmart from the fabric counter and had her make these like shorts jumper thing, maybe kind of overallish. I'll never forget this for me because I wanted to put this parade on. She made them for me and my brother and my best friend because I was going to bring awareness to my community about this. So we had our just say no to drugs. If I can find a picture, you guys, I will post it on social media because it's, it's gold. So we, We had our outfits, we had our hats, like my brother had a hat that I think had some material on it. I think we all had hats with material on it. We had poster boards, just say no, um, be cool, stay in school, like drugs are bad. We had all of these signs and we decorated our bicycles out. I think we even decorated the dog with some adornment. And we marched up and down our street chanting, just say no, um, And I wish I could think of other slogans that I said. I'll have to look it up. But I was so passionate about the cause that I was great about putting this together and taking it to my community, right? I hustled hard for that cause that I was behind. And I had people come out of their doors to see what we were talking about. We put flyers in their mailboxes. We hustled because we were tied to a cause because we were passionate about what we believed in. So the third instance that I can tell you that I did not stop to think about whether or not I should hustle or whether or not other people were going to be okay with my hustle was our church bake sale. So I'll never forget. We had a building fund. We had, my parents had helped uh, start a church and we had a bake sale because we had a building fund. We wanted to build a new building. We were operating out of this like shop that we had divided into half of it was an auditorium and then the other half was kind of like an open rec space so our Sunday school classrooms were we were a really small church and we were just kind of like in there in folding chairs with a teacher and it was cold y'all like it was cold in those were in that room when we went to Sunday school and so I caught the vision our pastor said hey we're going to build a new church we're going to have Sunday school classrooms we're going to have carpet it's not going to be drafty it's going to be really nice. So when we had a bake sale to raise funds for the building fund, sign me up. Like I was all in. I was like, heck yeah. If I can get a Sunday school classroom with like a chalkboard and desks and carpet. Uh, yep. I'm down. So I went out, I didn't sit at a table at our bake sale. Like all the ladies of the church made the desserts, made the baked goods. I didn't sit at the table. I got a basket of the goods because people weren't coming to our table. And I went out and I went through the shopping strip, like up and down to the stores and the patrons that were at the shopping strip. And I went up and I said, hi, my name's Brady. And our church is having a bake sale because we're trying to get a new building and I can have a really neat Sunday school classroom if you would like to buy something from me today. So how many cookies would you like to buy to support this cause? Literally, that was my 10-year-old spill of the bake sale while my basket was empty. And then I went back to the table and I got more baked goods and more baked goods. And the ladies who were sitting back at the table were like, what are you doing? How are you selling these things? It was simple. I had a cause that I was passionate about, a purpose, a reason that I was selling these. So I didn't care if anyone got offended that I hustled. And that I didn't ask them if they wanted to buy a cookie. I asked them how many cookies they would like to buy to support our building fund. Never once did I think I wasn't supposed to do that. So I want you guys to think about that when you're talking about like 
good girls don't hustle. And maybe other women around you don't hustle. But I want you to think about the fact that maybe those women don't hustle because they haven't found a cause worthy of hustling for. I'm going to let that one sit in for a minute. Literally. So while I was raised in an environment where women traditionally didn't work, they got married and had babies. I had a, a, a dad that believed I could do anything I put my mind to and told me on a daily basis. And he constantly told me, never depend on a man, create your own income, support yourself and follow your own dreams. So I had that in me and I knew that and I was able to hear that voice even when others questioned what I was doing. So today, even when I am doing what I'm doing right now, even when I'm grinding, even when I'm not present at some of the kids' baseball games, I hear those words because I am able to make an impact with what I do. So I want you to know if you're not the person that has had anyone speak those words into you, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm here to speak those words into you. Create your own income. Build it, make an impact, leave a legacy. Follow that hustle that is in your heart because God doesn't make mistakes. The drive that is in your heart, that calling in your soul, the thing that wakes you up in the middle of the night, that God placed that there. God put that drive in you. And I'm gonna leave you like with a scripture that I read when I was really um, hearing God call me to the human trafficking cause and I was fighting it and I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I knew I was supposed to be involved with it, but I didn't know how. So it's Matthew 10 and 27, and it says, what I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. So whatever he's whispering to you right now, you guys, get out there and go tell people about it. Go hustle. Go hustle for Jesus. I don't know about you guys, but I am loving this book. I am loving the tangible takeaways from it. I'm loving this study where I get to make it my own and put my own spin on how it applies to my life. And I love sharing it with you all. So as always, if you enjoyed what you heard today, do us a favor. Go write a review, please, on iTunes. That would mean so much to me. And it helps me to bring this free content to you each week. Then get crazy. Share it on social media and go tell all your girlfriends about it. I can't wait to chat with you guys next week. But until then, go out and live your best purpose-filled life.